Hello folks, hope you're having a great day today. Today I'm going to take a look at Hugh B. Cave again, who was one of the most prolific writers of all time. He wrote more than 800 short stories in the pulp era. Um, so today for my Weird Tales Tuesday, we're going to take a look at one of his short stories that he wrote uh, for the Weird Tales called The Watcher in the Green Room, which he published in Weird Tales in 33. So we're going to be taking a look at it basically at the height of Weird Tales for today. So hey, I want to thank you for joining us and hope you're, you're being safe today. Uh, and so forth, but we're going to be taking a look at Hugh Cave's um, The Watcher uh, in the Green Room today. Now, The Watcher in the Green Room feels like it is two separate types of stories. He's trying to emulate two separate types of writers. It feels both like he is doing something from a Poe perspective. He's trying to emulate Poe in this story, uh, particularly the story of the Telltale Heart by Poe. It also feels to me like he's trying to evoke Lovecraft, um, and, and this short story almost feels like he's, he's saying, what would it be like if Lovecraft met Poe? What, what would their baby be? <laughs> and this short, short story, written in 33 uh, for Weird Tales, feels like it's of both. Uh, feels like it's the love child of, of, of Poe and, um, and Lovecraft in a very strong way. Um, and in fact, this story is exactly like if you were to say to yourself, I like Weird Tales, I like the stuff that's published by Weird Tales, Lovecraft, Howard, Clark Ashton Smith, uh, you know, those sorts of people, I, I love them to death. And if you said, what would the Weird Tales take on the classic, classic uh, story, The Telltale Heart from Poe, what would that be like? It's this story. It's the Watcher in the Green Room. I'll give you a quick little synopsis of it. Um, we're going to open up with this drunk guy. Um, who's drunk in order to forget that his wife has recently left him. Um, and while the people that are in the same place that he lives are telling him that his wife left him, but, he'll, but she'll be coming back, he knows that she probably left to go with somebody else. Um, and so he's drinking to forget. While he is drinking, he starts to encounter something odd and unusual in his room, um, which has a dark, macabre aspect to it. Um, and that dark, macabre aspect seems to be... Um, very much along the lines of something sinister in his room, uh, coming from his cabinet. Um, so you're going to do a sort of dovetail into that and see what that looks like, what the arcane thing actually is, uh, and so forth with this story. Now, uh, this is uh, the second story I've done for you by Hugh Cave. I'll link you to the first one I did, uh, which was Boomerang, which is set over in Borneo and was heavily influenced by Jac Carl Jacoby. It's important also to understand that Hugh Cave, this is about four years into his writing career. He wrote his first story, and uh, he sold his first story at the age of 19. Uh, and he, by now, he's part of the Lovecraft circle. So writing a story that feels Lovecraftian in nature, um, he actually will write some Cthulhu mythos stories, too. So he's written, and he, he will, not yet, but um, he'll do that later on. He'll write a couple stories in the mythos, too. So writing a story that feels like Lovecraft meets Poe. Um, Definitely would be something that makes sense and will be on, on course for somebody who's a part of the Lovecraft circle now um, and is a big writer. Um, and, and he's just started his sort of campaign writing 800 short stories in the pulp era alone before he turns his, uh, his uh, venue towards higher quality story writings like Saturday Evening Post uh, and those sorts of things after the pulp era ends. So there you are. Um, that's Hugh Cave. Again, I'll link you to my first video review of him, Boomerang, down below, so you can check that out if you're interested. I'll also link you to this collection, um, and I'll also look to see if it's online. I'm not sure if it will be. It might be just be for free somewhere. If it is, I'll link you to that so you don't have to pay for it. Um, but otherwise, I'll just link you to this collection. Um, I'll be coming back to this collection. This is my second story I reviewed for you. It's not the second story I've read from it, <laughs> uh, but it's the second story I'll be bringing for you. I'm sure I'll hit at least a few more stories from it over the next few weeks um, as I do a kind of an unpacking of it so far um, for you. Uh, but there you are. Um, if you And I'll leave you to it. Let me know what you thought about this story in the comments below. Have you read it? What did you think about it? Uh, well, have you read anything by the author? Um, anything else by him? He's been canonized because of some of his works during his uh, more uh, popular era outside of the, the Weird Tales sort, sort of style of writing. Has been canonized because of the story, the mission in particular, of 59, uh, and the Saturday Evening Post, uh, which was heavily uh, uh, popularized and added to literature books uh, for people to read as they were growing up. Uh, but there you are, that's Hugh Cave. Um, if you like this video, please feel free to hit that subscribe button. There's going to be so many more of these classics in science fiction, fantasy, and horror to follow where I review. Hopefully, lost classics for you and give you a chance to unpack them. And finally, I just want to thank you for taking some time out of your day for watching the video. We all have so many things happening in our lives and being pulled in so many different directions. So the fact that you spent this time with me, that is so humbling, and I really do appreciate that. Thanks again, and have a great day. Bye-bye.